The Harold Perry Show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, let's look in on the little town of Melrose Springs, home of that popular radio entertainer, Honest Harold the Homemaker. We find Harold preparing to play a new role today. His friend, Pete the Marshal, has to leave town, and Harold has agreed to take his place at the jail for the day. At the moment, our Marshal Pro Tem has just finished a hearty breakfast and is ready to leave home to be sworn in. Well, how do you like this outfit, Mother? Guess I look like a regular marshal, huh? Oh, yes. You look very nice, Harold. Thanks. Is that a ten-gallon hat you're wearing? Oh, no. No, I only got five gallons. <laughs> but they threw in a grease job. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, uh, skip it, Mother. <laughs> yes, sir, I'll be the law and order in this town today. So watch your step, Mother. Don't get in any bingo games. <laughs> oh, Harold. You will be careful guarding all those prisoners. Some of them might be dangerous. Don't you worry, Mother. Old Marshal Hemp will handle the situation. If anybody tries it's any... It's sky, Copper, or I'll let you have it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Marvin, where do you learn things like that? I think he heard it on that radio program, Mr. Keen, Loser of Trace Persons. <laughs> <laughs> oh? Who? <Ooh. laughs> yeah, never mind. <laughs> Gee, Harold, wouldn't it be swell if there was a bank robbery today and I could help you catch the crooks? What? We shoot at them. Bang, bang. Yeah, Marvin. <laughs> they chase us around the bank. Bang, bang. Oop, and they shot me in the escrow department. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin, go to school. Okay, see you later. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> well, Mother, I guess I better go down and have Pete swear me in. Harold, what if there should be a bank robbery today? Wouldn't worry me, Mother. I'm overdrawn $4.30. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Pete. Howdy, Harold. Deputy Marshal Hemp reporting for duty. <laughs> sure is nice of you to take my place today, boy. Glad to do it, Pete, old pal. Say, before I go, Harold, I'd better swear you in as deputy. Yeah, all right. Yeah, let me see. Oh, here's the oath office. All right, now repeat after me, Harold. I solemnly swear. I solemnly swear. To man my post with vigilance at all times. Man my post with vigilance at all times. To remove all bird nests before operating. To remove all birds... Uh, uh, Pete, what's this about bird's nests? Well, I declare. I'm giving you the oath for tree surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Pete. Now, we don't have to go through all this for one day, though. Just pin a badge on me. Yeah, well, okay. Pete, I'm a little new at this running a jail. Any special instructions on how to handle all the prisoners? Oh, sure. We only got one prisoner, boy. Oh? <laughs> His name is Clarence. Awful nice fella. Clarence? Yeah. Used to be a famous second story man, Harold. Mm -hmm. But he's kind of come down in the world. We caught him robbing a cellar. Yeah. <laughs> cellar? What did he get? 30 days. <laughs> okay, okay. Please. Come on back to his cell, Harold. I'll introduce you to him. Introduce me. You're certainly formal in this jail. Hey, here we are. Hello, Clarence. Oh, hello, Pete. Clarence, I want you to meet Honest Harold Hemp. He's going to take my place today. Uh, how do you do, Clarence? Hi, pal. Yeah, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly familiar. Well, Clarence, I just know you and Harold will get along fine today. Well, any friend of yours is a friend of mine. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I hate to see you go, Pete. I'm going to miss you. And I'll miss you, Clarence. Oh, for heaven's sake. Say, is there anything you want me to bring you, Clarence? Well, I could use a saw. <laughs> <laughs> saw! You, you hear that, Harold? Ain't he a card? <laughs> yeah, he sure is. <laughs> I better keep an eye on that joker. <laughs> This being Marshall isn't so bad. Just sit here with my feet on the desk. <laughs> that Clarence certainly had his nerve. 
wanting me to run out and get him a Hershey bar. <laughs> well, I showed him. I got him one without any almonds. <laughs> Florabelle. Marshal, I want to report a robbery. Uh, well, you came to the right place. Somebody stole my affection. <laughs> Guess who? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> How's my big brave man getting along in his dangerous job? Well... Let me look at you. Oh, you certainly make a handsome sheriff. Old tall in the saddle. <laughs> Just call me short in the swivel chair. <laughs> oh, my. Are those real handcuffs? Sure are. See? Oh. Well, I bet you could subdue anybody with those. Certainly could. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, that's the most amazing thing I ever saw. You are on me just like a pamper. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Flora Bell, I guess you're absolutely helpless. If I wanted to steal a little kiss, there's nothing you could do about it. Not a solitary thing. I'm your prisoner of love. Yeah. <laughs> well, here comes the law. <laughs> Pucker up, prisoner. Hi, Harold. Oop. <laughs> oh, hello, Marvin. Hello, Marvin. Hi. What you doing, Harold? <laughs> As if I didn't know. Now, look here, young man. What do you want? Mother Hemp asked me to bring down your lunch, Harold. Here it is. Oh, well, thank you, Marvin. Goodbye. <laughs> Harold? What is it, Marvin? Harold, don't you think you better eat your lunch before it gets cold? Well, I am... Uh, Harold, I think I'd better be going. But... Uh, will you unlock me now? But... Uh, oh, all right. There. <laughs> Toodaloo, Harold. Um, bye. Toodaloo, Harold. <laughs> Marvin? Okay, okay, I'm going. <laughs> Boy, has a genius for showing up at the wrong time. Oh, well. Wonder what Mother sent me for lunch. Mmm. Ham hocks and lima beans with cornbread. Dear old Mother. This is really going to well, take... Well, how's your lunch, pal? Oh, that's pretty good. Clarence! What are you doing out of your cell? I thought I locked you in. You did. But I got kind of lonesome, so I picked the lock. You... <laughs> you picked your way back in again. Okay, pal, okay. Do I get my lunch pretty soon? You'll get it as soon as I finish mine. Well, Pete always gave me my lunch first. Mm. He gets it from the Busy Bee Cafe around the corner. I know that, Clarence, but you get right back in your cell. Oh, brother, ham hocks and lima beans. Say, I bet you didn't get that from any quick lunch counter. No, I didn't. My mother sent this down to me. Mother. Nobody can cook like mother, can they? Well, no. I guess they can't. Oh, what I wouldn't give to taste some real home cooking. <sighs> Clarence, you're blowing the beans off my plate. Oh, sorry. <laughs> guess I got carried away. Yeah, so did the beans. <laughs> well, I'll go back to myself. Uh... Clarence. Huh? Yes, you are. Pretty hungry. Would you like a bite of my lunch? Oh, I couldn't. Go ahead. Here, take this little piece of ham. Well, thanks. Mmm. Is that good? <laughs> Say, do you mind if I have a few beans to go with it? Yeah. What? Say, these are good, too. Mmm, yeah. your mother sure can cook. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll. Would have... you mind handing me that piece of cornbread? But <laughs> the other piece, that one isn't buttered. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. Oh, gee, this is good. You know, my mother used to cook just like this. Really? Mm hmm When did you see your mother last, Clarence? Well, pal, the last time I seen her was a year ago today. On her birthday. Oh, today's your mother's birthday? Yeah, yeah. The 30th of April. This is the 30th of May. Oh, yeah, that's it. May. <laughs> Does your mother know you're a second-story man? No. She thinks I'm a window cleaner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she doesn't know I open them after I clean them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see. Gosh, this will be the first time in years I ain't been home to see my mother on her birthday. Really? Yeah. I can just see her. 
sitting in a rocking chair waiting for her boy to come home? You can. Yep. Just sitting there rocking and waiting, waiting and rocking. Yeah. <laughs> Clarence. Huh? Where does your mother live? Oh, in a little town not far from here. What's the name of the town? Uh, Charlieville? That's it. Just a short bus ride. <laughs> well, what's the use of dreaming? Clarence, there's a bus for Charlieville in 15 minutes. Why don't you take it? You mean that, pal? Sure. I don't want your mother to be disappointed on her birthday. You could be back by 6 o'clock. Sure. Oh, gee, thanks. So long. Oh, oh, say, say, pal. Yeah, Clarence? Could you loan me five bucks for the bus fare? Yeah. But, uh, but the bus fare is only a dollar nineteen cents. Yeah, but what about my mother's birthday present? <laughs> oh, well, <yeah. laughs> well, never thought of that. <laughs> Here you are. Uh, thanks. I see you at six. So long, pal. Yeah. So long. <laughs> well, I certainly hope Clarence has a nice day with his mother. Say, he couldn't have made that story up just so he could run away. Nah, that's silly. <laughs> <laughs> We will return for the second act of our story, Honest Herald, in just a moment. Inflation is our worst enemy here at home, but we can curtail it by producing more goods at no increase in price by buying only what we need at fair prices. Let's all join in the campaign to preserve American economy by fighting inflation. Be sure to listen for Harold Perry's Honesty Award announcement at the end of tonight's program. And now, back to Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, so far, Honest Harold has performed only one official act as temporary town marshal. He has given Clarence, the only prisoner in jail, the day off to spend with his mother in nearby Charlieville. Right now... Harold is at the radio station, just finishing his afternoon homemaker program. His good deed has put him in a happy mood, so we find him singing a happy song. Ask me, how do I feel? Ask me now that we're cozy and clingy. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a bell, I'd be ringing. From the moment we kiss tonight, that's the way I've just got to behave. Boy, if I were a lamp, I'd light. Or if I were a banner, I'd wave. Ask me, how do I feel? Little me with my quiet upbringing. Well, sir, all I can say is if I were a gate, I'd be swinging. And if I were a watch, I'd start popping my spring. Or if I were a bell, I'd go ding dong, ding dong, ding. Ask me, how do I feel? Ask me now that we're fondly caressing. Oh, if I were a salad, I know I'd be splashing my dressing. Or if I were a season, I'd surely be spring. Or if I were a bell, I said if I were a bell, oh, if I were a bell, I'd go ding dong, ding dong, ding. Well, that's all for today, girls. This is Honest Harold signing off. Ta-ta. See you tomorrow, musicians. And Yasha, watch it on those beats, will you? Ask me, how do I feel? Well, I wonder how Clarence is getting along. Gosh, it makes you feel good to trust somebody. I don't care if Clarence is a second-story man. I know he won't let me down. Why, he's got the most... Oh, Harold! I mean, Marshal Ham. Yeah? What is it, Gloria? Oh, did you hear about the big robbery downtown? Robbery? Yes, a stop signal held up a pedestrian. <laughs> <laughs> he had me there for a minute. Where do you get those jokes? My mother. <clears throat> Your mother needs a new writer. Here's another one. Yeah, never mind, Gloria. I've got to get back to the jail. Jail? Oh, that reminds me. What's a policeman's favorite cookies? A policeman's favorite cookies? 
I give up. Cupcakes. <laughs> Cupcakes. Oh, brother. Goodbye, Gloria. There isn't much to do around this jail. Read the police gazette three times. Kind of lonesome around here without Clarence. Oh, hello, Harry. Oop. <laughs> well, hello, Doc. Huh. How's the marshal today? Oh, just fine. Oh, oh say, Harry, I just heard a wonderful riddle. Huh? What's a policeman's favorite cookies? Cop cakes. Mm. <laughs> There's a stool pigeon in this town. <laughs> Hey, Marshal, how's your prisoner, Clarence? Oh, I gave Clarence a day off. What? Yes. Matter, he said he wanted to visit his mother in Charlieville. It's her birthday. Harold, you fell for a story like that? Now, Doc. I bet you never see him again. I'll bet I do. I'd trust him any place. Clarence has an honest face. Honest face? Well, I never saw such shifty eyes. He's a... He always looks like he's watching a tennis match. <laughs> <laughs> really nothing to worry about, Doc. Clarence said he'd be back at 6 o'clock, and he will be. You just wait. Yeah, we better get out the checkerboard, Harold. Something tells me we're going to have a long wait. Is that so? Listen, Doc, if Clarence isn't back by 6 o'clock, I'll eat every checker on that board. Harold? Yes, Doc? What kind of salad dressing do you want on the checkers? <laughs> Doc, it's only 6.30. It is kind of dark, though. Maybe Clarence lost his way. I think I'll put a lamp in the window for him. Yeah. I don't think it's any use, Harold. Looks like Clarence is an old second-story man that just faded away. <laughs> All right, Doc. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of that old song... I'm waiting for dips that never come in. Oh. Gosh, eight o'clock. Clarence isn't here yet. I told you so. All right, Doc. Oh, Pete will be back pretty soon. Hey, what are you going to tell him, Harry? Uh, the truth, I guess. One prisoner to guard, and I let him get away. Mm. Even gave him bus fare to Charlieville, too. You know, Harold, I don't think Clarence even went to Charlieville at all. What? Ah, he's probably making a window-to-window -window tour of Melrose Springs. Doc, that's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, telephone. Maybe that's Clarence. Hello? Is that you, Clarence? No, this is Flora Bell. Oh? Marshal Hemp, I want you to come over to my house right away. What? Harold, I've been burglarized. Huh? Somebody climbed in the window and stole my diamond ring. Oop, I'll be right there, Flora Bell. And don't worry, I think I know who the criminal is. It's an open and shut window. I mean, Clarence. <laughs> I mean, Case. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> Uh, I know, Doc. I, I told, told you, you so. so. Mind the jail, Doc. Oh, isn't this exciting, Marshal? A robbery right here in Melrose Springs and in my house. Yes, Flora Bell. Very exciting. <gasps> I hope you catch the criminal. Yeah, well, let's get down to business, huh? Mm -hmm. Now, about this stolen property, what was the value of your diamond ring? A dollar ninety-eight. <laughs> you bought a diamond ring for a dollar ninety-eight? Yes. I got it at J.C. Penney's at that diamond jubilee sale. <laughs> It wasn't a real diamond. No. Now, you say this fellow came in through the window? Well, I, I think so. The window was open, but I didn't see him. He came in when I wasn't looking. <laughs> what a sneaky thing for a burglar to do. <laughs> Was the ring the only thing he took, Flora Bill? Yes. He didn't even touch Aunt Lucinda's silverware. Oh, uh, well, that's good. Harold, listen, I have an idea. Oh? Huh? They say criminals always return to the scene of the crime, so why don't you just wait here? Say. He might come back for the silverware at that. Of course. Uh, why don't we just sit down here on the sofa and wait? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> now, 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 floor bell. Uh, the best way to catch this fellow would be to wait outside and surprise him. Oh, you want me to come with you? We can surprise him together. Well, um, you better stay in the house, floor bell. He might smell your perfume. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> see you later, huh? Let's see. Maybe I can hide on the front porch here. He'll never see me in the dark. Yeah, I'll just move over here real quiet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a place to dill pickles. <laughs> Cold. What's that? Uh, uh, oh, porch swing. Uh, might as well sit down and wait. Be comfortable. Uh, uh, uh. Just hope Clarence does show up. I'll slip the cups on him before he can say... Peekaboo! Peekaboo! Oop! Laura <laughs> Bell, what are you doing out here? I heard you in my pickles. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, it's kind of lonesome waiting in the house all by myself. Oh, my... My, it's so dark out here. Uh, maybe I'd better sit down in the swing by you so you can protect me. <laughs> Who's going to protect me? <laughs> Isn't this nice? Yeah. Please, Flora Bell, don't forget, I'm here on official business. Oh, mm -hmm. you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tickle your ear. <laughs> now, Flora Bell. <laughs> Why, Harold, your ear has five points. That's my badge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it felt a little cold. <laughs> Harold, isn't this the... Shh, 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 shh. Flora Bell. Shh. What? What? Listen. Somebody sneaking up to the house. Must be Clarence. Oh, yes. Must be coming back for the silverware set. Oh, he's going to be awful disappointed. Aunt Lucinda lost two butter knives. <laughs> now, listen. He's coming up on the porch stairs. You stay right here, Flora Bell. I'll sneak up and slip the cuffs on Yes. Him. There he is, looking in the window. You won't get away from me this time, Clarence. <laughs> gotcha, Clarence. You walked right into my trap. Well, what do you got to say? Hello, Harry. <laughs> Doc, what are you doing here? Well, I got lonesome waiting at the jail, so I brought the checkerboard over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's your move, Harry. It sure is. I'm moving back to jail. Well, what'll I do? Oh, stick your head in the pickle tub. <laughs> Almost midnight. What am I going to tell Pete? Certainly let him down. He'll probably lose his job over this. Gosh, sure lonesome here at the jail all by myself. Yeah, just like the old saying, takes a heap of prisoners to make a jail a jail. Is that you, Clarence? Howdy, Harold. Uh, hello, Pete. <laughs> Harold, it was mighty nice of you to put that light in the window for me. Well, um... I didn't know you cared, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Harold, being away sure made me appreciate this job. I don't know what I'd do if I lost it. Zeef. Yes, sir, I was really homesick. I'm just sick. Pete, there's something I gotta tell you. Old friend, Clarence isn't in his cell. Well, I know that boy. He's right outside. Huh? Yeah, he's parked in my car. I ran into him down at the bus station. Bus station? Yeah, he said he'd come down there to meet me. Wasn't that nice of him? Yeah. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Guess he forgot I was coming from Charlieville, though. When I got in, he was just getting on a bus for California. Yep. He sure is absent-minded. He sure is. Well, hey, excuse me, Harold. I, I want to turn down Clarence's sheets for him. Yep. <laughs> getting on a bus for California. <laughs> Ain't that a doozy? <laughs> yeah. Well, there goes that lint head turning down a sheet. <laughs> uh, he's a bigger boob than I am. Wait till I see Hi, it. Hi, pal. Well, welcome home, Clarence. Thanks. Too bad you didn't get your trip to Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Funny about me getting on that wrong bus, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a good time at your mother's birthday party? I sure did. Thanks a lot, pal. Good night. Yeah, good night. Sleep well. <laughs> Who does he think he's kidding? Mother's birthday party. Tss. I bet he wasn't within 20 miles of Charlieville. <laughs> Hello? 
Hello. Is this Mr. Hemp? Yes. Who's this? This is Clarence's mother over in Charlieville. Huh? <laughs> I just wanted to thank you for letting Clarence come to see me today. Well, uh... Oh, this was one of the happiest birthdays I ever had. Hmm. Well, I'm awfully glad. <laughs> Thanks again, pal. Yep. <laughs> good night. Uh, good night, pal. Ask me how do I feel. I don't know. <laughs> Once again, here is Harold Perry. Thank you, Bob. Before we award our weekly honesty award to some deserving youngster, please allow me to thank all you kind folks out there for your interest in our project and for the avalanche of mail that's completely snowed in our committee, which includes screen actor Kirk Douglas, Eugene Biscalouse, sheriff of Los Angeles County, and little old me. Our selection this week is Richard Harrison of 8 Semis Avenue, Mobile, Alabama. Thanks. We received a great many letters recommending Richard Harrison. The first one from Mr. E.J. Millett of 557 Fulton Road, Mobile. Thank you, Mr. Millett, and all you other kind folks from Mobile. Richard Harrison, age 15, is a newspaper carrier boy for the Mobile Press Registered. Very recently on a Wednesday, one of our broadcast days, while Richard was on his newspaper route, he spotted a wallet lying on the sidewalk at the corner of Monroe and Stocking Streets. He picked it up and discovered it contained $166. Now, that's probably three months' salary to little Richard, who's a very hard-working boy. However, he identified the owner from papers in the wallet and promptly returned the wallet to its owner, who rewarded him with $15 in cash. Congratulations, Richard Harrison. I hereby dub you Honest Richard and award you a Whitnour watch, that distinguished member of the Longine Whitnour family of dependable watches. Harold? Ye yes, Gloria? This is your third award. Right. And they've all been boys so far. Mm-hmm. Aren't girls honest, Harold? Yeah, read that again, will you, Gloria? <laughs> I said, aren't girls honest, comma, Harold? <laughs> oh, sure. That's, yeah. But so far, the boys predominate. So keep your nominations coming, folks, especially on girls. Send them to me, <laughs> not the girls, the nominations. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Send your nominations to me, Harold Perry, Columbia Broadcasting System, Hollywood 28, California. Harold Perry, Columbia Broadcasting System, Hollywood 28, California. Goodbye, folks. <laughs> you. you have just heard the Harold Perry Show, Honest Harold. The supporting players tonight included Jane Morgan, Carly Bayer, Shirley Mitchell, Wally Mayer, Stuffy Singer, Gwen Delano, and featured Gloria Holiday as Gloria and Joseph Kearns as old Doc Yak Yak. Norman McDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Pretty too, wasn't it? Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone, Jack Robinson, and Dick Powell. Ooh. Just about a half hour from now, most of these same CBS stations will bring you exclusively the world's heavyweight championship fight between Ezard Charles, who will be defending his title, and challenger Joey Maxim, who holds the world's light heavyweight crown. Meanwhile, there'll be music and fun in another great Bing Crosby show. Stay tuned now for Bing Crosby, who follows immediately on most of these same stations. <laughs> Bob Lamont speaking. <laughs> It's a CBS where you meet Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, every Thursday night. The Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>